and there's a little, you know, the yeah. So, so this is the Renshaw 3D printer? Yes. So laser centering? Correct. So powder based. We actually got a new model which is a four four laser one, so nice, nice. an awful lot faster. Because that's what the main um, criticism was is the speed of build, so nice. So what kind of metal did you got here? Well it's got material there, so this is TI sixty four, so that's titanium. Nice. Uh, we got aluminium there. Uh, down the bottom stainless. But we also work with things like Inkano. Cobalt Chrome. Um, yeah, I got an ink and a part. Uh, this is part of a heat exchanger. I use a, an example because it shows you the definition to down to which we can print. Oh yeah, you know, very thin walls, and that's what heat exchangers are need to have. It's lots and lots of wall area. Yeah, to dissipate the heat. These are both heat exchangers as well, these two large parts inside there. Nice, nice. That's good, man. It can all be opened up. So what kind of uh, post-processing is involved in something like this? It really depends what you're looking for. I mean, 95% of the parts coming off of one of these is going to want some form of post-processing. Yeah, yeah. Now that could be as simple as polishing or bead blasting or sandblasting. Um, but majority of the time, he's going to want some traditional machining. I mean, that part down there, there's a manifold. Uh, so any mating surface is going to want some traditional yeah. machining. Yeah. So when it comes out, that's how it comes out. Yeah. Okay. So there isn't like a bunch of powder, metal powder. Well, there will be powder. That all goes down there. But this is all your support structure. Uh huh. So that it'll be EDM'd, wire EDM'd off of the machine. Nice. And then all of these supports will literally just be broken off. So so it goes and then to you a wire. Tidy it up. So it goes to a wire. Do you wire EDM after? to take it off to take the whole part off and it still leaves the supports there yeah and then you break the supports off and then clean up where the supports went nice nice but you know the design it's all about the design and making sure that you've actually got minimal support so you're wasting less material oh yeah plus reducing time yeah so i, I mean i'll give you an example oh. that's an example it happens to be a bottle opener Oh, nice. I'll let you take this with you. Oh, really? So what we do, see, because with supports, anything less than about a 45 degree angle, you need supports for, yeah. just like with plastics. Yeah. So were I to try and build it in that orientation, I need supports here. Uh -huh. Were I to try and build it that way, I'd need supports there, or indeed even building it that way. But because we optimize the design, it's actually built straight off the platform, just on two little pips, nice. and then there's no supports. So... Even like though it looks, too. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even though it just looks like it, it's aesthetic, it's yeah. not. It was done yeah. purposely to reduce the amount of um, nice, nice. supports on it. Was good, man. Cobalt crumb, dude. Oh, yeah. thank you, thank you. This is a nice unit. So y'all got different sizes. Um, this is a 500. I guess 500 actually refers to the uh, laser beam. Oh, okay, okay. So it's a 500 watt laser. <laughs> This last number, we've got the new model, which is the Q, which is quad, so it's a four laser, so that actually has four 500 watt lasers in it. Nice. Um, but the build volume's the same. Yeah. It's 250 by 250 by 380, which is effectively 10 by 10 by 14 inch. So, so after you print an object, you have to de-stress it, or like uh, heat treat um, anything, it anything? Yes, just like you'd heat treat any um, normal part if you'd need to heat treat it. With titanium, though, yes, you do de-stress it with heat. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so, so, so parts what, like this, you wouldn't need to. So what happens if you don't de-stress it? It'll do kind of bow you, you, or deform it, over it, time? It'll, it'll, yeah, potentially it could um, deform due to, you know, the uh, unevenness of the stress. Yeah, yeah. But that's what you're going to do. You're just going to de-stress it. Nice. 
and you just see it says in fine layers so typically 50 microns a time drop the stage down put a new layer of powder fire the lasers that's it nice so so how long how long does it take for something like this to print up? I think that was about, um, uh, was that six hours, I think? Wow. But it's fairly empty inside, so yeah. it depends on the How density yeah. and what you're, what you're printing. Um, yeah, so, now some parts, I mean that one down there is so solid, I think that took about 40 odd. Yeah, um, yeah. And you can even get parts running into many days if they're extremely not really dense because the the what I mean what I'm sort of referring to is if they're uh, not a hollow structure yeah fairly solid however density we don't like talking about density in terms of when we talk about uh, a print except for when we're talking about the density of the solid part of the material because people say well how does this compare to a normal billet of that material Actually, we've got it now with our own optics and fine-tuning it. We're within 0.1% of the same mechanical properties as a raw billet of that material. So we're very, wow. very close. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even though it's micro Yeah, because I was always welding. thinking, you know, just these similar to something you see on cast, uh, cast parts, which is, what, 30%... Um, 30% of the density of a Oh yeah, we, we are way beyond cast. We're actually pretty close now to a foraging. Nice. Well, it's good, man. 